Hello my friends, my name is Arthur Ray and I am an Estonian soldier. <laughs> Today we will be watching a video about a plane once again. I've watched a video about the F-35, then the F-22, which of them is better one, there was the whole dispute about that. But there's another type of plane that can be very expensive, from the future, unbeatable in battle, but it doesn't seem like it. It's a bomber. B-2 stealth bomber. It's a huge plane. I mean, if you look at it, it doesn't seem like it's unbeatable. It's just this huge clunk of a metal flying above you. I would seem like it's very clumsy and slow and easy to shoot down, but I'm quite sure I would be proved otherwise. The America wouldn't make a bomber that is more expensive than the F-35. It has to be good. But it seems truly like a scrap metal flying above you. There are updates to the channel. I asked you on my community tab, what should I do with the Estonian YouTuber Cup competition because the deadline is advancing towards our way. And you guys actually, first of all, you said to postpone the deadline. And in the second questionnaire, you said to do it forever. We'll see what we're gonna do, but now I know what you guys at least want. I'll take that into consideration when I'm making the decision. What I can tell you is it's not gonna end on June the 6th, maybe July the 4th it's a big day for you guys or maybe it will go on even after that i'll take a few days to decide before we start the video we have three patrons to mention daniel drews thank you daniel for becoming a patron steven paz thank you mr paz finally we have taurus ying thank you for becoming a patron if you want to support the channel patreon is one of the best ways to do it the link is in the description below you can also send me messages of the videos you want me to react to and i will but now let's see what is this b2 stealth bomber that everybody keeps talking about and it doesn't look that like it could it doesn't look like anything actually it looks like a triangle Is there one of those planes that you can refuel when you're in the air? We could see another plane attached to the bomber, so it was... I, I guess it was refueling, but imagine how much precision that takes. Two planes have to hover exactly in the right position to be able to connect each other and then continue flying while they're refueling the tanks. Fuel tanks. Crazy. Here's why B-2 stealth bomber is most feared warplanes on the planet. Most feared warplane on the planet. See, I didn't even know about this. You guys keep talking about this as much as I found out of the titles of the videos. It's one of the most expensive and the newest bomber in the world. Everybody's afraid of it and it's super capable, but it looks like a damn triangle in the air. What? How? Prove me wrong, Mr. Video. Designed during the Cold War as the world's first low observable or stealth strategic bomber, the B-2 Spirit harkens back to the designs of revolutionary engineer Jack Northrop. His flying wing design first debuted in 1949 as the YB-49 but was not adopted by the Air Force at the time. The 1949 already? So this is an old design. It's an old design revitalized but i wonder why didn't they adapt it already back then maybe the technology wasn't as good as now b2 spirit is a multi-role bomber capable of delivering both conventional and nuclear munitions the bomber represents a major milestone in the u.s bomber modernization program and brings massive firepower to bear anywhere on the globe through previously impenetrable defenses wait what <clears throat> i have a question why do you even need bombers nowadays back then you had bombers in the 50s, in the 40s, the anti-aerial shields of the countries weren't very strong. They couldn't shoot planes down as good as they can now. But nowadays, every country has a very strong anti-aerial weaponry. So why do you need bombers if they can just shoot them down? And you have rockets also. I mean, it's very hard to shoot down a rocket, I guess. It's easier to shoot down a plane, I would imagine. Why do you need bombers if you have rockets? If you have nuclear rockets and very strong, powerful, explosive rockets, why do you need to drop bombs at all nowadays? Even F-35s can deliver very big explosives on the ground. And they are air-to-ground planes focusing on that, so... What's the purpose of bombers nowadays? There's no st strategic bombing raids anymore. At all. I think it's illegal even. 
Why do you need this? Its capability to penetrate air defenses and threaten effective retaliation provides a strong, effective deterrent and combat force well into the 21st century. Okay, <clears throat> so it says the strength of this plane is to penetrate the enemy anti-aerial air ground-to-air weapon systems. But how can this huge triangle penetrate it? I mean, it's it's so big and bulky, I would imagine you could even see it on the ground. And second of all, such a big thing couldn't go really fast, could it now? Now, I'm, I know I'm wrong here all the time, because otherwise the US government wouldn't buy these. Of course, they're good. But I just can't see it now. It's, it's a huge, clunky triangle flying up above, penetrating anything, being super fast. And I'm missing something. I want this key piece of information that puts this picture together for me now. I, I'm missing something here. The revolutionary blending of low observable technologies with high aerodynamic efficiency and large payload gives the B-2 important advantages over existing bombers. Its low observability provides it greater freedom of action at high altitudes, thus increasing its range and a better field of view for the aircraft's sensors. Its unrefueled range is approximately 6,000 nautical miles 9, kilometers. What? You can fly 9,000 kilometers with this plane without refueling? That's true. That is an insane amount of kilometers. I mean, I can drive a thousand clicks with my car with one tank. This plane flies nine times that. You don't even need these planes anywhere in the world except for the US because you can fly anywhere actually you, with one straight go. And if it is that fast, it wouldn't even take that long. Hell, you can just fly to Africa from the US if you want to. Have bombing raids there and just fly back. Just takes a few hours though. The B-2's low observability is derived from a combination of reduced infrared, acoustic, electromagnetic, visual and radar signatures. These signatures make it difficult for the sophisticated defensive systems to detect, track and engage the B-2. Many aspects of the low observability process remain classified, however, the B-2's composite materials, special coatings, and flying wing design all contribute to its stealthiness. The B-2 has a crew of two pilots, a pilot in the left seat and mission commander in the right, compared to the B-1B's crew of four and the B-52's crew of five. So the previous bombers have five and four personnel, this has only two, so reduced personnel. I think also the materials they're using in this plane are blocking a lot of signals. Like the material they use is a big thing on stealth business already. But since it's so secretive, we don't really know what's the, what's the thing about this plane. It just looks like a triangle. It is very, very thin. It can carry a lot. Doesn't really look like much. Looks like something from a sci-fi movie, right? But I think the thing that makes it special is a secret. We can't really know it, otherwise the technology would be out there, right? The first B-2 was publicly displayed on November 22, 1988, when it was rolled out of its hangar at Air Force Plant 42 Palmdale, Calif. Its first flight was July 17, 1989. The B-2 Combined Test Force, Air Force Flight Test Center, Edwards Air Force Base, Calif, is responsible for flight testing the engineering, manufacturing and development aircraft on the B-2. Whiteman AFB, MO, is the only operational base for the B-2. The first aircraft, Spirit of Missouri, was delivered December 17, 1993. Depot maintenance responsibility for the B-2 is performed by Air Force contractor support and is managed at the Oklahoma City Air Logistics Center at Tinker AFB, Okla. The plane is from the 80s. The first one was delivered to the military in the year 93. So the plane is way in the 90s, way back, back when it came to use. I mean, it should be outdated. Should be well outdated, but as I told you in the last video, also military tech lasts for much longer than civilian tech, and military tech is way ahead of civilian tech because they have so much, so much more motivation, I guess, to research. Lives are at stake, a lot of money from the governments, and they can do things differently. But this plane is old. It is not a new plane, and it's the best in the world. Again, I am blown away how. Things invented 25 years ago in the US military still rule the planet. No one has done better. How is this possible? What will we do with the Estonian YouTuber Cup competition? June the 6th is coming by, but we're not gonna end it there. That I can tell you. I'm not going to tell you if we end it at July the 4th, your Independence Day, or we carry on with it. Most of you guys actually said to carry on with it, so you don't have to worry. Go and get the cup, add some points to your home state, 
put it into history forever. Let's begin with today's competition and find out which state is the state of the day. And the new thing about it is, whichever state will be the state of the day, I will read one interesting fact I didn't know about this, that state. That way we can all keep learning and the state to win will get recognition. We have Rory O'Reilly from Newcastle, Delaware. Thomas Tingjian. I'm, I'm quite sure I'm saying that wrong. I'm saying it as Chinese Tingjian. It's not, it's Tingjian, something like that. I have no idea how to say these names. And the place where you live, Mr. Thomas, is even weirder. Listen to this. You live in Timber Arch Lane Manor. What a weird name. But a state is not weird. Nope. The opposite, it's Texas. Forty-five for Texas. Texas hasn't been the state of the day yet, I wonder. This is a weird one. We have Kenneth Duncan. Kenneth, you live in paradise. I don't mean paradise. I mean, yeah, you do live in paradise. The city is called paradise. And where is it? Of course, it's in California. We have Michael Wazio. Wazio. Michael, you're from Oak Lawn, Illinois. Finally, we have Rebecca Brazas. Rebecca, yes, that's a full out woman's name. Don't have to worry about it. Is the man's name? Is the woman's name? Sometimes I don't know. But today, I know. Nice of you to get the cup. You're from McHenry. Let me say it as a true Scot. McHenry. You're from McHenry, yes. And that is also in Illinois. The second one for Illinois. Well, you know what that means. Illinois is the state of the day. Way to go, Rebecca. You brought the victory upon your state. Now we will Google unknown fact about Illinois. The state of today fact of Illinois is Illinois was the first state to ratify the 13th Amendment to abolish slavery. Way to go, Illinois, my homie. Yes, I don't like slavery. Nobody likes slavery. And Illinois was the first state to take a step towards free people. Way to go. State of the day will have state of the day fact and we all learn something new about your home country state of the day green marker nice my friends go and get the cup put the points behind your states back to the video the combat effectiveness of the B-2 was proved in Operation Allied Force, where it was responsible for destroying 33% of all Serbian targets in the first eight weeks by flying non-stop to Kosovo from its home base in Missouri and back. Allegedly it was a B-2 spirit which dropped the bombs that destroyed the Chinese embassy in Sarajevo. In support of Operation Enduring Freedom, the B-2 flew one of its longest missions to date from Whiteman to Afghanistan and back. The B-2 completed its first ever combat deployment in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom, flying 22 sorties from a forward operating location as well as 27 sorties from Whiteman AFB and releasing- It is flying from US straight to Eastern Europe or Northern Africa or the Middle East. No stops in between, you can just take these 9,000 kilometers with no problem. But that's a lot of hours for the, for the pilots, right? It is weird to think that if you have war going on in Northern Africa, Middle East, then the weapons, the bombing runs are made from the US and then going back to the US. You know, most of the area of bomb bombardments done in the Middle East, a big part of it comes from Rammstein base in Germany. They are coordinated from there because that's the biggest, closest military base of the US to the Middle East. But now this plane goes back to the US, many thousand kilometers and the whole ocean in between, just to make one bombing run. That shows something about the capability of the US Air Force. Seeing more than 1.5 million pounds of munitions. The aircraft received full operational capability status in December 2003. On February 1, 2009, the Air Force's newest command, Air Force Global Strike Command, assumed responsibility for the B-2 from Air Combat Command. The B-2 made its first flight 30 years ago, but the U.S. Air Force's stealth bomber remains one of the world's most feared aircraft. It's seen combat in Kosovo, Iraq, and Afghanistan, and is one of the U.S.'s most formidable and mysterious weapons. 
It's the only known stealth bomber in the world, capable of dropping both conventional and nuclear payloads. First flown on July 17, 1989, the B-2 was originally intended to carry nuclear bombs deep into Soviet territory by evading detection. Its shape, paired with the plane's stealth systems, would enable it to be undetected by Soviet radars. Okay, so it's, it's developed in the Cold War for to be able to overcome the Soviet radars, right? But now we don't have the Soviet Union, the Cold War is way over. It is OP, it's overpowered, it doesn't have an enemy nowadays, because no one has this... US doesn't have an enemy that it needs to invade right now. And in the next, next 10 years, I don't think also. So this plane is just very powerful. You know, it, it doesn't have a purpose in a way, because you, you don't need to go stealth. It, it gives you a lot of extra points, of course, I understand, but... You don't have an enemy of this side that would challenge this plane's capabilities. That's what I want to tell you. And I wonder why is it the only stealth bomber? Why haven't Russia or China developed some? I know they're doing their fighters, their destroyers, everything they're copying from the US or trying to match at least, but no bombers. This is the only stealth bomber, one of a kind. The B-2's long range meant it could fly deep into enemy territory and return home. With the collapse of the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War, the B-2 has been used to drop non-nuclear bombs. Its first overseas deployment, to Guam, was in 1998, and it made its combat debut during the Kosovo War in 1999 and has since flown sorties in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Libya. More recently, the B-2 has been placed in bases in the Pacific as part of a strategy to deal with potential threats from North Korea and to deter China. Wait a minute, look, you have, okay, this... I understand it can avoid radars, right? You can't see this plane, but I'm quite sure it did. you can shoot it down with a fighter. If China's newest fighters or Russia's newest fighter fighters, I think they can shoot this down. They're not radars, they're fighters. They can go very fast. They're meant to destroy targets on the air and on the ground. I think they can take it down. Or can't they? That's the question. Maybe there's a secret here. I don't see. Here's what makes the B-2 bomber one of the world's most extraordinary warplanes. The B-2's first flight was July 17, 1989. The Air Force acquired its first B-2, the Spirit of Missouri, in 1993 from Northrop Corporation. The B-2 bomber was shown to the public for the first time in 1988, just before the end of the Cold War. Its stealth capabilities were virtually unmatched. The B-2 can carry 16 2,400-pound B-83 nuclear bombs, but its official limit of 40,000 pounds of ordnance means it can carry a massive amount of precision-guided munitions. The B-2 has a max range of 6,900 miles on a single tank, but aerial refueling can keep the bomber up indefinitely. On one bombing mission, two B-2s flew a 34-hour round-trip mission from Missouri to Libya and were refueled in the air 15 times. 15 times in their 34-hour mission. Crazy, those pilots are insane. The same pilots, right? Okay, this bomber is very capable. It's more capable than the pilots running it. Now we have reached a point where you need to uh, change pilots also, not only the fuel. 20 B-2s in service is named after a state. Here, the spirit of New York can be seen at the British Royal International Air Tattoo in July of 2012. The B-2 is a flying wing aircraft, so it has no fuselage or tail. This means it has low drag, high structural efficiency, and generates more lift than other fixed wing aircraft. The B-2's max speed is Mach 0.95, or 630 miles per hour. Because of its capabilities, B-2... 630 miles per hour, that is not... It is not that much, I would have expected even more. Twos have been deployed to Guam to keep an eye on North Korea. They are also extremely important for keeping top rivals like China and Russia in check. At home, the B-2 is often seen in flyovers during sports events. The B-2 is currently one of three strategic bombers currently in use by the US Air Force, the other two being the B-52 Stratofortress and the B-1 Lancer. The Air Force plans to retire the B-2 in the early 2030s. So it is the newest and only one of its kind, stealth bomber, supersonic as I heard, and they plan to retire it. Why though? Why do they retire these? It's the same thing, they want to retire the A-10 Warthog, but it works, and this one also doesn't have rivals, but maybe they do retire it because it's too, it's too expensive to maintain and there's no need for it. 
We are not having conventional war anywhere right now, almost country to country doesn't exist. This, it's only guerrilla warfare everywhere, but not conventional war. So you can't really use this much. And everything you need to bomb, you can do it with other bombers also. You don't need this multi, multi-billion multi dollar project to be run. I guess I understand why they want to retire it. Too expensive. Fighters can take it down easily. And I think even if you make better radars, they can detect the plane designed in the end of the 80s. I think the radars can be so much better now. Don't take this the wrong way. Maybe there's something the US government cannot tell us because there's a secret inside. You know, they cannot show us this information. Why is it so good? How invisible is it truly? We'll get another video on Monday. So be back at the meantime. Go support the channel on Patreon or go and get the Estonian YouTuber Cup. I'll think about what I do with the competition. Uh, it's not gonna end on June the 6th, so you can just go and keep keep getting them these cups. Drink tea or coffee or whiskey or rum with my videos. Drink it from this cup. And as always, my friends, until my next video, stay cool and bye bye.